Today, in this video, I want to talk to you about how to stop your dog from barking at the TV. So stay tuned. This is a request that I cannot believe it's taken me so long to address in a video, but I have a lot of people asking me, how do I stop my dog from barking at the TV at other dogs or, or squirrels or things like that? As always, it's going to take training and patience and time. Whenever we have a behavioral issue, something that we're trying to change or stop, it's important to remember that we're untraining a behavior versus teaching a good behavior from the start. So at the end of this video, I'll actually talk about how to prevent this from happening so that if you have a puppy or a new dog, you can get ahead of the game. So first things first, we never know when your dog's trigger is going to cross that screen. So you have to assume it's going to happen at any point. So that means you always need to have treats on the get-go because if we want to teach our dogs not to do something, we want to teach them what we'd rather them do. So it's not just be quiet. In the beginning stages, it's, I want you to kind of come over and see me. And the reason is because I have something better. I'm more exciting than what's on TV. And depending on how long this has been going on with your dog, this could be really challenging. So make that treat, that motivator high. If your dog goes berserk at the TV and it's going to be hard to pull him off of that, make that reward something that he would do flip-flops for and then keep that reward for only this behavior. So that is super special. The next thing is hang on to that remote because what we're going to do is we're going to be working on turning the volume down, turning the channel, that sort of thing. So you want to be on the go. Like I said, if you want to change this behavior, you have to be ready to work through it. I don't have a magic wand where I can say, your dog, poof, is better. You got to put in the work. It may be easy. It may be a little more challenging. It's also important to note that if you're practicing these, but your spouse is not, your children are not either, this is probably a behavior that's going to hang on. The thing with untraining a behavior is that it really needs to be consistent. If you're not able to have consistency with the training, then you're not going to be able to get good success no matter how much you try. You might get a little better, which, okay, that's a little better, but just know that you're going to be in an uphill battle. So first thing first, by all means, if, if there's a way that you know that you have a certain show or a certain commercial that's maybe on your, your recorded DVR that you can play and control, that's what you want to start with. So if you know that, wow, this program has this commercial and it's been on the recorder, I want you to go there. I want you to go to that program. Or maybe you hit the internet and hit YouTube and you click on squirrels on TV or dogs, dog training, you know, that sort of thing. So now we have a little bit of control because you can stop and play and rewind, stop and play. So what you're going to do is we're going to amp down all that excitement. So when we think about TV and the dogs getting excited about whatever it is they're getting excited about other dogs cats squirrels whatever it has visual and audio going on so what we're going to do is you're going to pick one to work on at a time if we're going to pick the video then turn your audio down so hit that youtube put it on your big tv and be ready the volume's down your dog's up and around you have your nice high value treats you're already with the remote in one hand to hit stop or pause and your hand poised on your pocket getting ready to grab those treats so you're gonna start the video and out comes the dog from tv as your dog starts to to see the dog on tv hit your pause and yes and throw some treats your dog may or may not have responded and either is fine. So if he didn't respond, even better. Because now we're really starting to desensitize your dog to whatever that is. And again, whether it's a dog or a squirrel or whatever, search YouTube, find your trigger of choice. And if he does bark or carries on, it doesn't matter. Just go ahead and throw those treats anyway. Don't worry, you're not reinforcing the behavior. What we're starting to do is we're going to condition your dog that when they see X, treats occur doesn't matter what they respond like because even if they go bonkers treats are still going to come because after repetitions what happens is instead of going bonkers they're going to go oh that means mom or dad's going to toss out those treats and then that's how we start to get rid of that rambunctious behavior because now they're starting to anticipate that that means this 
that's the whole concept of desensitizing and counter conditioning. We're taking something that's a stimulus and we're amping down the excitement level again by turning off the volume and we're conditioning them that when that happens, this happens. When that happens, this reward happens. This will probably be your first chunk of training for a while. And again, what we're doing at the very beginning is just on off. So it's dog on screen, off and reward. Dog on screen, off and reward. You're going to do this as long as it takes, not in one training session, maybe maybe five reps at a time, but over the course of days, weeks, what you're looking for is that condition response that when you flash that dog on TV, your dog now looks at you like, there's a dog, where's my reward? That's your aha moment. That's when your dog's starting to go, oh, I I kind of get what's going on. That's when you go, okay, now my next step is instead of turning it on for a half, you know, turning it on, turning it off, I'm going to turn it on. Now my dog's paying attention to me, remember, because we're at that we're at that level now. So I'm going to turn it on, let it be on for a couple of seconds, and then off and then yes and treat. So we're extending the time that the dog's on TV before he gets yes and treats. Once you start getting more time on that TV with that critter, that dog, squirrel, whatever, you're triggered, you can tell them, oh, you're such a good boy, what's a good job, you're so smart, yes, treat. So as that time's extending, you can talk to your dog, oh, aren't you so handsome, you're doing such a good job, yes, treat. One key thing to think about too, your trigger on the TV that you're controlling, each day that you practice, a different, a different dog, a different trigger. So I don't want it to be the exact same one over and over. I don't want to condition him that it's that dog. I want to condition him that it's any dog. It's any, any movement. So tomorrow when I go on, I'm going to pick a different video. While you're working on having him do the seeing the dog on TV, you can also, in another training session, work about hearing the dog on TV. So instead of on your TV screen and playing your YouTube video, you might be on your laptop or your phone with the audio of it. So he's not seeing the screen, but now he hears the dog or hears the squirrel or whatever, the vacuum cleaner or whatever that noise is. And so it's going to be the same thing, barking for a second and then stop and then treat. The dog barks for a second, stop and treat. And you're going to work that process as well. So now you're getting to the point that barking is on for a while. You're going, that's a good boy, good job, yes and treat. What, you're such a good boy, aren't you so, oh, such a good doggy, yes and treat. So now you have two things that you've been practicing. You've been practicing your dog seeing the trigger on TV and being comfortable and happy and looking at you and listening to the dog on TV, being comfortable, happy, and looking at you. Now the next thing you want to do is sandwich them together. When you do this, it's going to be harder. So even if you're at like 10 seconds, 15 seconds of each, when you sandwich them together, go back to the on-off. So now that you have visual and audio, you turn it on, everything's happening, quick second, stop, yes and treat. And then again, you're going to rebuild that. So your quick second, yes and treat, boom. Quick second, yes and treat, boom. And what you're doing is you're not only are you conditioning your dog that those things mean food, but those things mean I check in with you. So that at some point, if this hasn't been going on for a decade, then you'll be able to gradually get rid of the food and just go, oh, you're so handsome. Why don't you come over here and play with your squeaky toy? Now, real life happens. So this is going on in your training sessions where it's all controlled and practiced, but what happens in real life? So in real life, back to the bopper, back to the treats always in the pocket and you're watching TV you just need to be ready so when that thing comes on TV you're gonna quick either hit mute or stop or channel change as you yes and toss treats commercial of the dog whatever it is that gets them crazy stop yes treat and just like the other sessions if it's a commercial that's on often you're gonna be able to get that level higher and higher to some point where he's watching the commercial and you're like, oh, you're so handsome, five seconds in, yes, treat. 10 seconds in, yes, treat. And then eventually fade the treat. I said, it's gonna take practice and a little bit of manipulation. But if you want that behavior to change, that's what you're gonna have to do. The other thing is, 
don't leave your dog alone with the TV on. People do this all the time and you know, most people it's not an issue. I'm not someone that leaves the TV on. I'm someone that leaves a specific CD on so I know exactly what's gonna happen. Cause even radio stations can be crazy and I don't want that to happen when I'm gone cause I don't know what's gonna happen. And when I'm gone and Dexter sleeping, I want him to stay sleeping. I want it to be a calm environment. So TV or the radio stations, they don't tend to, to do that. So. I want it to be a little controlled so I have a specific CD and it's in there and it's on all the time. Now for you puppy owners or new dog owners and you don't know the history of your dog, it's prevention. So when you're watching TV and, and they're fine, right? They might be looking at it, they might be engaged with it, especially if they're looking at it and engaged, I want to pay that off. I want to go ahead and reinforce that now. I don't want to wait for a behavioral issue to happen. Remember, I said this was one of my most requested videos. So that means this behavior happens a lot in dogs and a lot of people want to fix it. So instead of trying to fix it, let's work on preventing it. When you're watching TV within your dogs in the room and another dog barks, toss them a treat. If you have a puppy, I always have treats in my pocket because I want to prevent all these common behavioral issues from the first place. And so that just means I'm conditioning my puppy right off the bat. That means this, that means this, that means this. And basically it's food. This is how my puppy gets his food for the day. It's through these training lessons. It's through these prevention lessons. Dexter's 11 now. I don't feed him for dogs on TV. I don't feed him for the vacuum cleaner on the, on the TV because I conditioned him as a puppy that those things meant food. Those things meant good things. So now when those things happen, he care less. There's zero reaction to that. And that's because again, I played that Pavlov ticket. That food, that food constantly. Out for a walk, a dog barks, boom, he got fed. Out for a walk, we're passing a car backfired, boom, he got fed. I don't wait for problems to happen. So if you have that puppy or that new dog, do a little prevention right now. Go ahead and prevent it for that first year. You'll be thinking me in the long run because you'll have a happy, confident dog that's no worry. If you thought this video was helpful, please hit the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon and you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you want to dive deeper into your dog's training, behavior, and care, check out my Patreon page. The link is below. Until next time, remember to pause and enjoy life. And I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.